China's high-speed rail goes overseas for the first time. Indonesia's Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail officially opened for operation on October 17, and China's high-speed rail won its first export order from Europe. In this video, let us learn more about it. At 16.35 on October 17, 2023, Beijing time, the G1137 EMU train departed from Halim Station in Jakarta, Indonesia, and the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway was officially opened for operation. The train has a maximum operating speed of 350 km per hour and can reach the two places in as little as 46 minutes. This marks that Indonesia has entered the era of high-speed rail, and China and Indonesia have achieved major landmark results in jointly building the Belt and Road. The Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway is the first high-speed railway in Indonesia and Southeast Asia. It is also a flagship project for the docking of China's One Belt, One Road initiative and Indonesia's Global Maritime Fulcrum concept, and for the pragmatic cooperation between China and Indonesia. The entire line adopts Chinese technology and Chinese standards. The Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway connects the Indonesian capital Jakarta and the tourist city Bandung. The total length of the line is 142.3 kilometers, with a maximum operating speed of 350 kilometers per hour. Starting from Jakarta, passing through Bikasi City, Bikasi County, Karawang County, Puangkarta County, West Bandung County, Chima Market, Bandung County, and finally to Bandung City. It has four stations, Halim, Karawang, Padalaring, and Dekarer. In the early days of the official opening of the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway, 14 multiple trains were operated between Jakarta and Bandung. The fastest running times from Jakarta Halim Station to Karawang, Padalaring and Dekarer stations are 12 minutes, 30 minutes and 46 minutes respectively. In the future, the train operation plan will be flexibly and dynamically adjusted according to changes in market demand and passenger flow to better meet the travel needs of people along the line. The Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway EMU is designed and manufactured by a Chinese company using the advanced and mature technology of the Chinese standard EMU with a speed of 350 km per hour, Fuxing, adapted to the Indonesian operating environment and line conditions and integrated with Indonesian local culture. It has the characteristics of advanced technology, safety, and comfort. Each EMU is composed of eight cars, equipped with VIP, first-class and second-class seats, with a total capacity of 601 people and can be operated in multiple ways. It is equipped with disabled toilets, braille guidance signs and other barrier-free facilities as well as vending counters, coffee machines, microwaves and other equipment to provide passengers with a good riding experience. The major stations of the Jakarta-Bandung High Speed Railway present the distinctive characteristics of one station, one scene, highlight modern functions, highlight Indonesian culture, and integrate the beautiful natural landscape of West Java and the local weaving culture. Equipped with advanced and complete service facilities and an intelligent customer service information system, it is seamlessly connected with municipal transportation such as light rail, buses, and taxis, making it more convenient and faster for passengers to travel by high-speed rail. Halim Station in the capital Jakarta has become Indonesia's largest railway passenger station. The station has a construction area of 26,000 square meters and can accommodate 2,500 people waiting for trains at the same time. Padalalang Station is the only station on the entire line that is interconnected with the existing regular speed railway, 
enabling smooth transfer between high-speed railways and regular speed railways. The geological environment along the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway is complex, making engineering construction very difficult. The Chinese and Indonesian participating units have fully learned from China's successful experience in high-speed rail construction, adhered to the concept of ecological environmental protection, and strengthened survey design and construction organization and strengthen safety and quality control and promote project construction in a scientific, orderly, high-quality and efficient manner. The project route is selected to avoid landslides, volcanoes and other unfavorable geology as much as possible. Engineers innovated and designed advanced systems such as bridges with better seismic isolation performance, smoother ballastless tracks, and more powerful train operation control, and built 13 tunnels and 56 bridges to high standards. During the construction of the Jakarta-Bandung High Speed Railway, a large amount of cement and other raw materials produced locally in Indonesia were purchased and used, which promoted local economic development. A large number of Indonesian employees were recruited to participate in project construction, bringing a total of 51,000 local jobs and training 45,000 Indonesian employees. Before the Jakarta-Bandung High Speed Railway was officially put into operation, China and Indonesia carefully organized relevant units to conduct joint debugging, joint testing, inspection and acceptance and safety assessment of various professional equipment. Comprehensive optimization and adjustments have been made to the track status, pantograph performance, train control, communication signal system, etc. to ensure that the line is fully qualified for opening and operation. Operation management and equipment maintenance personnel are carefully selected and undergo strict training and examinations to confirm their qualifications. The Indonesian Ministry of Transport issued a commercial operation license to Indonesia China High Speed Railway Company, limited on September 29. Another interesting thing is that from September 8 to October 16, more than 80,000 people in Indonesia flocked to the Jakarta-Bandung High Speed Railway to make an appointment for a test ride and a sneak peek. Since the Jakarta-Bandung High Speed Railway started joint commissioning and joint testing on May 22 this year, high speed rail has become a high-frequency word in Indonesia. According to Duiana, chairman of China High Speed Railway Company Limited in Indonesia, especially after Indonesian President Joko took the Jakarta-Bandung High Speed Rail for the first time on September 13, People who made reservations rushed to experience it, setting off a high-speed rail fever in Indonesia. Nowadays in Indonesia, taking a check-in photo with the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway has become a fashionable configuration for many people's social accounts. At the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Rail-themed check-in points at Halim Station in Jakarta and Padalalang Station in Bandung, the reporter once encountered a family of five and three generations taking photos here. This high-speed rail craze comes from the Indonesian public. As early as August 17, Indonesia's Independence Day, the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway model was taken to the streets by the people and became the mascot of folk celebrations. They were proud of Indonesia's first high-speed railway. On September 9, the See the World by Train event organized by China CRRC Corporation entered Indonesia, attracting nearly 500 people who made a special trip to Bandung to visit the Jakarta-Bandung High Speed Railway EMU. In order to grab a test ride ticket, some people carefully made strategies to get started in the middle of the night. The train was scheduled to leave at 9 o'clock, but someone arrived at the station at about 6 o'clock. 
Some people even take a more than two-hour flight from the outer islands to Java Island, where the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed railway is located just to experience the feeling of a land flight. This high-speed rail craze is also supported by Indonesian senior officials. Jokowi took the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail twice in less than a week. A video of him raising his finger and showing the train speed of 351 km per hour behind his back became a hot search topic and became a living advertisement for the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed railway. After announcing the official opening of the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed railway on October 2nd, he even took his wife and a group of senior Indonesian officials on board the train. After the official opening of the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed railway, the travel time between Jakarta and Bandung has been greatly reduced, greatly improving local traffic conditions and making travel easier for people along the line. At the same time, it will promote the development of commercial development and tourism industry, inject acceleration and provide new momentum for regional economic and social development. It is of great significance for deepening practical cooperation between China and Indonesia and accelerating the construction of a real picture of a community with a shared future between China and Indonesia. The international communication effect brought by the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway is significant. On October 17, CRRC Changchun Rail Bus Company Limited, a subsidiary of CRRC, and the Ministry of Construction, Transport and Infrastructure of Serbia officially signed a commercial contract for the purchase of Serbian high-speed EMU vehicles. This is another major breakthrough in China's going-out strategy of high-end rail transit equipment. It is reported that this batch of trains will include 20 cars, that is, a total of five high-speed EMUs, with a maximum speed of 200 km per hour. They will be put on the newly built Hungary-Serbia railway. The Serbian section of the railway is already in operation. The Hungarian section is in the comprehensive track-laying construction stage. After the entire railway line is completed and open to traffic, the railway travel time between the capitals of Hungary and Serbia will be shortened from 8 hours to about 3 hours, significantly improving the level of interconnection between Central and Eastern European countries. It is worth mentioning that this batch of trains is also the first time that China's high-speed EMUs, with a speed of more than 200 km per hour, have been exported to Europe. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.